Now for the latest in our series marking 60 years of the NHS. Tonight we report from the sharp end of the health service where patients go if they need emergency treatment. Yes, this evening our report comes from the busiest accident and emergency department in our region. Last year, the NHS Ambulance Service received 6.3 million emergency calls. That's about 720 every hour. In the Bristol area, if you call an emergency ambulance, you could well end up in A&E at the Bristol Royal Infirmary. Richard Payne was given exclusive filming access. Uh, basically, I shut it in my door. Why don't you make your pain level right at this moment? I gave you a really It's 8 o'clock in the morning, and Margaret Platten's been brought into hospital with chest pains. Government targets dictate 98% of patients must be assessed within four hours, a deadline that's already passed for this patient. How do you feel of lying here in the emergency department for more than four hours? Is that a problem for you? Or? Not really. It's got to be, so it's got to be. She's waiting for a bed. Um, for us, beds are always a big problem in that we have to wait for a bed to come up for a patient to go to, and that bed needs to be suitable for their care. This man has one of the toughest jobs in the NHS, ensuring his busy, often highly charged department runs smoothly, even when not all factors are under his control. When the hospital's full, the emergency department becomes full. And unfortunately, when we're full, we don't have any space to unload an ambulance that might arrive. Uh, which means ambulances have to wait and uh, we really regret that because of the effect that it has on the community as a whole. There's an ambulance with somebody in it with chest pain and the ambulance crew have taken a, an electrocardiogram, a heart tracing. What we can do here is uh, speak to the ambulance staff and authorise the use of clot busting drugs um, if it's a heart attack. This heart tracing doesn't show any signs of a heart attack um, possibly a little bit of angina but not a heart attack and so therefore we don't need to give the clot busting drugs at the moment. In fact 82 year old Hazel Robertson was only discharged the day before. We've been seeing a lot of you recently. Oh no, too much. Too much, too much. I'm sorry about that. Unfortunately uh, things seem to deteriorate overnight and the breathing's become worse. Uh, previously it was just pain that was the main problem but her breathing's troubling her today so that's what we'll deal with today. Well, it's lunchtime now, and since this morning, this department has seen 35 patients and is now officially full. All 11 cubicles here are now occupied, and you'll find two patients over in the resuscitation department. That's not unusual, but it's clear that this department is now working close to capacity. This is a life-and-death environment, and when the worst does happen, it's the job of nurse Emma Fisher to broach the subject of tissue donation with grieving relatives. More are agreeing with the help of new information packs. Families, when they actually speak to you afterwards, will say, you know, it wasn't as bad. You know, we get ourselves into a state thinking, oh, I've got to ask, when really they've had the worst news that they could ever get. We can sometimes end with maybe ten a week. And as they sometimes out of that, you might only get two that are happy to donate. How did the door actually close on the finger? Did no. the mechanism shut? No. It's not all so traumatic. Minor injuries range from sprained ankles to fingers trapped indoors. They're going to drill a hole in it and hopefully get some stuff out. Sounds painful? Uh, yeah, but uh, hopefully it will be less painful afterwards. Obviously the pressure I'm pushing down will, will make the bruising worse, but you shouldn't feel any sharp pain. Let me know if you do. Do you want to look? There you go. Nice. And that's coming out. Okay. It actually feels a lot better already. Yeah? Yeah. That's what's been causing you the problems the last couple of days. It's one of those simple things, but good results. We're all committed to providing the best possible care for patients, and we're, we're pleased to be able to do that 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For us, that's uh, one of the pride things about the service, and that you come here, whatever, whatever's wrong with you, uh, whatever the problem is, whatever the time is, and we're here to see and help, um, and uh, we'll hopefully make people better. In tomorrow's special report, we'll be spending a Friday night in A&E, often the most hectic time of the week, and a shift few relish. Emotions run high as staff work to treat critically ill patients.
And sadly, uh, one of the patients featured in Richard's report, Margaret Platten, has died since filming took place. Mrs. Platten's husband told us he was happy for us to show pictures of her. Our condolences to her family, of course.